Genesis 2-4 begins a new manuscript. There are two manuscripts. One is Genesis 1-1 through 2-3, and the second one is 2-4 through the end of the book. Now, notice in Genesis 2-4, if you have a New American Standard, you're going to see the word accounts. Do you see the word account? That's Toledoth in Hebrew. If you have another translation, your Bible might say generation. Does your Bible say generation? That's the word Toledoth. You say to me, and listen, are you, look at point two. In your Bible, I'm just going to run a couple through you so you can see it. So you saw that in Genesis 2-4, the word is generation or accounts. Agreed? Now that, that's going to be special. Look down, go to chapter 5, verse 1. You will see the word generation. Generations. Go to chapter, chapter 5, verse 1. Do you see generations or accounts? Either one of those two words would be fine. Either generation or count. Do you see it? That's Toledoth. If you go to the sixth chapter, verse 9, you'll see it again. It'll say generation or count. Do you see that? That's a Toledoth. Tenth chapter, verse 1. Tenth chapter, verse 1. You're going to see the word generations or accounts, that's a Toledoth. Do you see it? See, you got a pattern. Now, if you go through the 11 that I've listed on there, like 11 chapter verse 10, the 11 chapter 27, 12, I bold printed them for you. It's going to say generations. Every one of those are Toledoths. Do you understand that? Well, I'm just telling you what it is. In the English, it's called generations. Now, let me tell you something about manuscripts. And manuscripts is everything. How many manuscripts in the book of Genesis? Two. You say to me, how do I know it? Listen, the writers, the, transl writer, the translators out of the original text into the New American Standard hit it right on the head when they translated verse 4 with the word account. When you're dealing with manuscripts, original manuscripts, there is the thing called colophon. It's in point number one, a colophon. A colophon is what separates manuscripts. The writer did this in Genesis 2-4 to show you he translated the word Toledoth by the English word accounts to show you we, are we have developed a new manuscript. The first manuscript deals with the, the creation of the heavens and the earth. The second one are the descendants of the human race and especially the Messiah. So re reason is called generations or Toledoths. But you see, in 2.4, the, the scholars knew that there was a new manuscript in Genesis. And to make sure you didn't miss that, that that's called a colophon, a separation of manuscripts. They, they took the same word generations and translated an account. We have a new account through the 50th chapter. I know, look, I know. You're going to say, I've never heard that ever in my life. I know that. But did I not just show it to you? Now, look, I can't, I can't help it that you don't know Hebrew. You could if you'd come to this church. We teach you Hebrew. You don't you have to be without it. Right now, we're teaching Greek. Teaching Greek in this church. So you understand the magnificence of the Greek language, but listen, 
Anybody can learn it, right, Willie? All right, shake your head, yes, Willie. Just depends how much you want. Just depends how much you want. See? We're going to give you as much as you want. It just depends how much you want. But listen, there are 11 Toledos. There are two manuscripts in the book of Genesis. Moses, listen, this is Moses. He is a phenomenal writer. You've got to understand what a magnificent Old Testament writer Moses was in the Hebrew language. And what he did with the book of Genesis is lights out. Now, we're studying the first 11 chapters of Genesis or the first five Toledos. We have already studied creation. We've studied Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 3. Now we're going to break down the next, we're gonna, I'm going to teach five Toledos and I'm going to take a break from it. <clears throat> because from chapters 12 to 50, you're talking about Abraham and the patriarch period. So, but let me tell you, this study in Genesis is dynamite. I'm going to tell you, it's dynamite. It'll, it'll clear up so many problems that we're having as a culture in America today. It'll, it'll clear them up. The Word of God will clear them up. So, under point number one in this, the, the colophon, that is a separation of two manuscripts. There is one manuscript, Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 3, that's about the creation of the heavens and the earth. Agreed? Then he picks up a complete, another subject, which is the descendants of the human race, with emphasis on the Messiah Christ. And he goes from 2-4 to the end of the book on generations. And he's going to give genealogies in there that are just dynamite. And so I, it's important that you see that. I went into great discussion with you on it in your paper from, from the, the uh, sixth Toledoth to the end, you're dealing with the patriarch period. From Genesis 12 through 50, you're dealing with the patriarch period. And there are six Toledoths in it. See, the, Moses, Moses divided the book completely different than, than the, the translators did. They divided by chapters, didn't they? They, they, they went off script. They went off script. Moses didn't write it that way. <laughs> they went off script. But listen, they did in the New Testament too. They were written by letters and they put them in chapters and all that. I'm not, I'm not opposed to that stuff. I'm just saying you ought to know how Moses wrote it. <laughs> and that's the way I teach it. I teach it the way it was originally written because I think Moses was trying to make big points with this. I mean... That's my opinion. Listen, my job is to tell you what the writer told me to tell you. And what you do is your business. But that's mine. So in our Sunday services, after today, our Sunday services, we're going to look at the five, first five Toledos. We'll be looking at Genesis 2, 4, 26 through uh, fourth chapter 26, the account, the account of the first human inhabitants of the earth. Think about that. You'll find that nowhere else but in the Bible. A gen, gen, the second Talmud of Genesis 1, 1, 5, that's the way Moses wrote it. In the sixth chapter, verse 8, the generations of Adam dealing with the, the Sethites and the Canaanite races. In Talmud 3, which is 6, 9 through 9, 29, according to Moses' writing, we have the generations of Noah and the Nephilim race. A third race is introduced, the Nephilim. In the 10th chapter, in the 4th Toledoth, chapter 10, verse 1 through the 11th chapter, verse 9, the way Moses wrote it, it's the generations of the sons of Noah and identifies seven, 70 nations. 70 nations after the flood. The post-Diluvian period. 
And then the fifth Toledot, 11 through 1110 through 1126, are the generations of Sham or the Shamites who carried the Messianic seed. What a wonderful study this is going to be for us. This is a wonderful study, and we're going to study it according to Toledos. Do you understand that? Toledos. Translated into English, after 2-4, it's always translated generations. And it's talking about the human race, and specifically the Messiah. The first five Toledos cover the period of the last Shemites who became the first Israelites. When we get to chapter 12, we're introduced to Abraham, the father of the Israelites, in Christ. In the Abrahamic covenant, God told Abraham that he would be the father of, of a multitude of nations. That never happened, except in Christ. And when he gave that prophecy in the 12th chapter to Abraham, called the Abrahamic covenant, when he refers to you, he's referring to Christ. You shall be a father of many nations. He's not talking about Abraham. He's talking about Abraham's seed, Christ. Watch this. I'm going to close. Just, I'm just priming the pump. All I'm doing is priming the pump. Why don't you go to the book of Galatians with me? Why don't you go to the third chapter with me? When he was speaking to Abraham, he wasn't speaking to Abraham as such. He was speaking to Abraham as the father of Christ. In regard to seed, descendancy, descendants. In the third chapter, verse 16, Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He did not say, and to seeds, as referring to many, but rather to one. That one was not Abraham, nor was it his descendants. It was whom? Christ. Christ. Do you see that? Now, look at verse 29. Now look at verse 29. I'm going to jump back up to 26, but I'm headed to 29. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ, point of salvation. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free man, neither male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Now look what he says in verse 29. For if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants. You see, that's part of the you of the father of many nations. You are Abraham's descendants and heirs according to the promise they give it to Abraham in Christ. It's always about in Christ. That's just interesting. We're going there. We're going to study all this. We're going to study all this on Sunday. We're going to study it all. All right? But we're going to study it by Moses' outline. We're going to study it by Toledos. Are you with me? Jack. The colathon is an identity that we're separating manuscripts. That's why it's only used in verse 4, but it is a Toledoth. They translated the count to make sure you knew that we are separating manuscripts. It's a, it is a switching of manuscripts. By the way, that 
That's, I, that's kind of common knowledge. It's called a colophon. Okay? I mean, you can look it up in your English dictionary if you want to. I mean, it could kind of tell you. It separates manuscripts. And they, and they showed it specific because it, it said Toledoth, and they translated it counts. Good question. Thank you. Good question. Okay. Let's have prayer. And you stay and eat with us. Please stay and eat with us. Go downstairs. These ladies have cooked. They have prepared us a meal. And so, and then uh, stick around and play. We're, you know, if the sun's out in the rain, while well, we got some games and we want to get to know one another better. Father, we're so thankful for these that have come our way today on Sunday. <clears throat> Isn't it interesting, Father, how Paul calls it the Lord's Day <laughs> because of the resurrection. Oh, thank you, Father. I pray, Father, as we have closed one service and opened another idea of the Toledoths. I'm so thankful, Father, for the great writing of Moses, whose great focus was not on the law, but on Christ. And Paul understood Moses' writing when he said, listen, the law just points you to Christ. It just points you to Christ. Moses doesn't point you to the law, it points you to the law of Christ. We're so thankful for that. Encourage our hearts today, Father, to be one, one of one minds, to fellowship with one another. And be thankful, Father, we're in Moody. To be part of this Moody community is our heart's desire. And to share the truth of the word of God with these wonderful people. Especially with these young people who are just excited about the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.